Let's take a few minutes to talk about making hospital visits. Now this kind of visit, it's an entirely different animal. Uh, simply because you're not at a home, obviously you're there because there's an injury or an illness, something that's happening. So uh, let's talk about what happens before you go on a hospital visit. Well before you go, the first thing you need to do, check the hospital, make sure the person that you're visiting is still there. There have been many times where I've gone to the hospital and I get there and they're not there any longer. So I've learned this from experience. Even sometimes call, I will call if the hospital is 30 minutes, an hour away, I'll call on the way there to say, hey, I just wanted to make sure that they were still there and, uh, and just check with the hospital information. You don't have to call the room, just check with the hospital. Then write down the name of the person you're visiting and write down the room number. That way you have it with you. It's easy to remember. Now hospitals are like a maze and so when you get there and you're trying to find the person or find that room number, something I do, I don't just wander around because I don't really want to spend a lot of time wandering through halls. I will actually stop and ask people. And I'll go a little further, and if I don't know where I'm going, I'll stop and I'll ask someone else. And every step along the way, you get a little bit closer. Then you want to learn the names of the immediate family. Like uh, if you have a church database and you're going to visit somebody, and maybe you don't know them real well, you'll want to know their spouse's name, other family members, because the chances are those family members are going to be there, and you want to be able to very quickly recognize, know who they are, call them by name. If you have a church directory, look them up in the church directory if you can. That way you can recognize them. As a minister, there's many times you'll make hospital visits to people that you've never met before because they're connected to your church or they're a friend of someone in your church and so it always feels a little bit awkward because you're walking into a situation where you don't know the people so the more you can know about them the more you can know to actually recognize them the better it is then never make a hospital visit while you are sick even if you think you're not contagious now this is for your safety but it's also for the safety of the people you're visiting so if you haven't been feeling well, if you woke up with a sore throat and a little cough and, uh, and somebody is in the hospital, it is better for you and more considerate of you not to go visit them because you're not feeling well than it is to you know hide that you're not feeling well and to go visit them anyway. And then before you go, pray for guidance and direction because you never know who you're going to encounter or what's going to happen during a hospital visit. Uh, there are times you'll go make a hospital visit and somebody, their condition may change right in front of your eyes and you're with the family and it's a moment of crisis. So walk in with a very prayerful attitude with a very ready heart. As you arrive at the hospital, like I said, hospitals can be confusing. Uh, and, and honestly, I believe most hospitals are confusing from the parking lot all the way. There's not a single part of the hospital that's not confusing. So like I said, ask directions. Um, as soon as you arrive, find a help desk and help them to find out where you need to go. Again, at that point, if you have the person's name but you haven't called ahead, go ahead and find out their room number as well. Then when you find the room number, very, very, very important, knock at the door. If the door's shut, don't just open the door and walk in. In fact, if the door is open, I knock at the door and I wait for somebody to say, come on in. Now the reason not to open the door if the door is shut, if that door shut, you have no idea what might be happening on the other side of that door. And you might walk into an extremely embarrassing situation, both for you and that other person, if you don't knock. And so go to the door, knock on the door, wait for somebody either to open the door or to ask you to come in. Like I said, if the door's open, knock gently, just kind of as you come to the door, let them ask you to come in as well. If they're in there and they're talking to a doctor, come in the room and just stand there. And they'll probably say hi to you and just kind of hi and then turn your attention to the doctor. You don't want to interrupt when a doctor's talking with the family. Uh, if you arrive while the doctor's in the room, a lot of times if a doctor's in there having a conversation, I will wait in the hallway until they're done because I don't want to interrupt that conversation. Always follow the rules posted in the room as well. Uh, for example, you may come to a room and it might say that you can't go in that room unless you're wearing gloves and a mask. And it's because this person is so highly infectious. Well, not infectious to you. It, they can catch something. Uh, their immune system is very low. And so it's a security thing. So pay attention to any signage that may be there. And sometimes you'll need to go down to the desk and say, hey, there's a sign on the door. It says, I need gloves. I need a mask. I need a gown or whatever. And so they'll give you what you need and do that before you enter the room. Now, if there's a sign that says no visitors, 
A no visitors sign applies to everyone. Now, there are some ministers that I really think believe that a no visitor sign applies to anybody else except for them. And, and it's not true. A no visitor sign means friends, family, ministers, include you in there, everybody alike. So the best thing to do is to leave a note. Simply write a note, hey, I dropped by, wanted to pray for you, I am praying for you, care about you, let me know if there's anything I can do. I saw the no visitor sign, so I just didn't want to interrupt. You know, and just a nice note. Leave a nice note for them. Now, once you're in the room, a few things to do. One, smile. Most people get very uncomfortable in hospitals. Smile, okay? Don't get uptight. Be casual. You know, make eye contact. Introduce yourself if the patient doesn't know you or if you don't know them. Um, uh, a lot of times they may know you, but you may not know them. So go ahead, introduce yourself. Introduce yourself to any family that are there as well. Um, do more listening than talking. Uh, don't have a gloom and doom demeanor, even if it's a bad situation. So if it's a bad situation, you don't have that gloom and doom. Don't, be, don't, don't have a hopeless attitude or a hopeless demeanor. Be sensitive to the needs and the feelings of the individual or the family as well. Be sensitive to what's going on. You know, we all respond differently when we're in situations of crisis. Some people, when they're in those tight moments, they crack jokes. And if that's you, be very careful that you are appropriate in what you say. Um, there was an associate of mine that I was training once, and I found out that my pastor banned him from hospital visits because his character, he was very funny, but when he got in those situations, he cracked jokes. And one day he was there with our pastor, and our pastor felt like he was inappropriate in some of the jokes that he said. Now, he didn't feel that way, and I wasn't there. I don't know. All I knew was he was the only person I'd ever seen our pastor ban from making hospital visits. And so uh, simply to say, how you emotionally respond to situations, guard yourself, make sure that you're appropriate and sensitive in everything that you do. Also, listen for the Holy Spirit's guidance. Let Him guide your heart in how you pray for the family, in what you say to the family, in what you do. Look for ways to encourage the individual. Look for ways to encourage the family. Keep your visit short. You know, usually when I make a hospital visit, I'm there between 5 and 15 minutes unless the patient or the family asked me to stay longer. See, I don't want to be a burden. And sometimes the presence of a stranger or the presence even of somebody that they know is a little bit uncomfortable um, simply because some people, when they're sick, they don't want people around them. And honestly, I'm that way. If I'm in the hospital, I really don't want visitors. I don't want somebody to be there long. And I also don't want somebody to come and stand there with awkward silence. You know, I'm more the type to say, hey, if you're going to be here, grab a book, at least read to me or something. Um, uh, so make your visit short unless they ask you to stay long. Along with that, I avoid sitting down. So when I come in, I don't sit down because as soon as you sit down, that means you're going to stay. So I'm communicating to them, hey, I'm just here for a minute. And if they say, hey, go ahead and have a seat, I usually say, well, I, I didn't plan to stay long. Uh, I just want to drop by and see if you need anything. And I really wanted to pray with you. And so uh, sometimes if you sit down, it makes it a little harder for you to leave. And sometimes you end up staying longer than you actually planned and sometimes maybe longer than they actually wanted you there. Also, remember that you're not a doctor. So don't add your medical opinion to the situation. Do more listening, again, than you do talking. Look for ways to help the family, but be genuine. Um, if you're really not willing to bring food, then don't offer it. You know, I, I like doing that. I like being there and saying, hey, if there's anything you need, let us know. You know, if you need supper, have you eaten yet? I'll gladly go pick up something for you. And, uh, and if you do that, if you offer it, don't expect them to pay for it. You know, go by, make it your offering to them. And uh, so if you don't have somebody ready to watch your kids at home so that you can come up and bring them a meal, don't offer to do it. Uh, you know, be careful, be genuine in what you offer, but be realistic, understanding what you can and can't do as well. Also, another piece of advice, ask for permission to pray for the individual and their family. Ask for permission. Hey, can I pray for you before I go? And even when I pray for somebody, if it's a lady, I will ask for permission. Hey, can I put my hand, you know, on your, on your arm while I pray for you? I'll ask for permission to touch them even. And so be mindful concerning those things as well. 
Uh, keep your hands away from your mouth, away from your eyes, because you want to avoid spreading your germs to them and also any other germs there to you. When I leave, I wash my hands. I use these things the hospitals put out that have the kind of squirt disinfectant. I put them on my hands. You know, when I get to the car, typically I'll wipe my hands off again, simply because I want to make sure that I'm not bringing anything to my home or to my life that is in the hospital. You know, you can catch a lot of things by being in the hospital. Another thing is is listen to warning signs. If there's a warning sign that says somebody's quarantined, don't walk in. Don't think, my God is big. He can take care of this and waltz in. Because believe me, most of the time, the family, the doctors, almost nobody's going to be very happy with you about that situation. Listen and be respectful to the family, the patient, the doctors. You're there to encourage. You're there to pray. You're there to help. Now, if you show up and the person's sleeping or they're out of the room for tests, um, I typically just take a quiet moment to pray for them, and then I'll leave a note. Uh, and if you don't have a pen and paper, you can go to the closest uh, nurse's desk and just say, hey, I came by, by to visit so-and-so in such and such room. Um, they're not there. Can I leave them a note? And you can leave a note, put the room number on it, and then just ask them. You can either take it in the room, leave it there, or ask them to take it by later on as well. And so those are just some set suggestions to help you in making effective hospital visits.